automatic migration to Swift 6. No more new versions for co-post dependencies. Share state inside app group easily and other iOS and macOS development news. I'm Alexander Belous, an engineer at Setup, and we are getting started. Apple engineers have shared their vision for the future of data race safety and structured concurrency in Swift. Their goal is to reduce the need for concurrency annotations in projects where they are necessary while providing advanced tools for parallelism. The vision is broken down into three main phases. First, sequential single-threaded code. Second, asynchronous code without data race safety errors. And the last one, leveraging full parallelism to boost applications' performance. Each phase addresses current challenges and how the Swift development team plans to tackle them. For instance, global and static variables class they needs will be implicitly isolated to main actor, and model-specific code will be asynchronous by default. Future plans also include isolated conformance and overrides issues review, and automatic migration build to make transition into Swift 6 smoother. That said, the team isn't currently focused on issues like task ordering, actors re-entrancy, or improvements to diagnostic and compile times. What will the final result look like? We will have to wait and see. Hopefully, Swift 6 will be more accessible and migrating existing projects will be as seamless as possible. In episode 15, Roman talked about CocoaPods transitioning to maintenance mode. Well, we've got some updates. The project creators shared more details. In just two years, CocoaPods will move into read-only mode. This means you won't be able to add new dependencies or update existing ones. The transition will happen in phases, with announcements for maintainers to give everyone time to prepare. Starting December 2nd, 2026, the Cocoa Pods trunk will stop accepting new pod specs. But don't worry, if you are using private pods with your own pod spec repo, these changes won't affect you. A new library, Swift Sharing from Point3, just launched and is a game-changer for managing shared state across UI components and within your app. As always, Point3 delivers a universal and elegant solution. This library supports multiple storage types, like user defaults with use support in memory or disk storage. Solution works seamlessly with observable models, SwiftUI and UIKit, and is flexible for testing. Unlike native app storage, you can use the shared wrapper in any context, including the model layer. For example, you can easily set up a launch counter stored in user defaults and increment it. What's even cooler is the ability to define strongly typed key with the default values for even better code safety. Personally, I was impressed by the file system API. You just specify file storage with the URL and use a codable model as your data type, and you are set for the local data storage. Under the hood, it uses file descriptor to observe file writes across multiple processes via the same URL. Overall, Swift sharing looks like the perfect solution for syncing state within an application and inside app group. Let's talk about recommendations. Enthusiasts are always inspiring, especially when they create something stunning. I want to highlight the SwiftUI Experience Repository, maintained by designer Mike. He shares code that bring his creative ideas to life. Some of his latest experiments include smooth transition between page with charts, a fresh approach to viewing maps, and a dock for navigation within an iOS app. The second recommendation is Jacob's technical blog. He writes fascinating articles about iOS development, diving deep into the details. One of his recent smart reads is about the difference between dynamic frameworks, static and measurable libraries, and how they affect app size and compile times. Another standout post explains crashes, the types of issues you might encounter, how they relate to the Swift runtime, and a detailed analysis of a Swift source code with links to the official repository. If you are into deep technical insights, Jacob's blog is definitely worth a look. That's all news for today. Take care and see you soon.